Hey everyone, it's Rico here. Wanted to go ahead and take the time to create a video on uh, going through how to set up the controllers uh, for Daphne in both the Daphne loader as well as in Launchbox. I've had a lot of people asking me how I went about in setting up the controls uh, for the arcade. And uh, so I wanted to go ahead and just take the time and just show everybody both methodologies as when I kind of get on YouTube, it, it's not really talked about very well on, on either approach. And so uh, hopefully this video will help you out a little bit and just show you how I went about setting this up. All right, so let's kind of jump into this. There's a lot of material to cover and the video is probably going to be a little bit long, but uh, let, let's just go through everything. So the first thing is, let's go ahead and talk about the Daphne loader. This is by far going to be the easiest setup. Those of you guys who have seen my other video, you know, on how to set up the Daphne and, and Launchbox, you can see how much more complex it is, you know, and, and the setup versus the, the loader. And going and doing the controls is going to be almost the same thing. So what we basically need to do is let's, let's go over the methodology of how Daphne goes about selecting the joysticks. And so to do that, we're going to go ahead and open up the joy.cpl, which is going to be the game controllers um, portion for the Windows setup. And so in this system that I have right now, you're going to see that I have a Logitech gamepad, the F1310. And then I've also got a Logitech Extreme 3D, which is like a joystick for like a flight stick. And so what Daphne does on its driver is it wants to use the preferred game controller. And what I mean by that is, is if you go over here to the advanced button and you click on it, you can see it's looking for a preferred device. And so in this particular case, let's say that I'm going to set my um, the uh, Logitech 3D here as my preferred device. So by the Daphne driver, it's going to literally use that controller to set up its buttons. And the way that you do that is we're going to go ahead and pick a game, let's say like Cliffhanger, and you go to the Configure, and then you go to the Input tab. And these are all the default keys that uh, Daphne uses to set up all the keyboard you know, aspect of the mapping. And you can see over here that there's this button tab, but there's nothing in it. So with this preferred um, <clears throat> device set up, this is what Daphne is going to use to essentially map these buttons. So it's really as easy as just clicking on one of these and you can hit change. And you can see that it's going to start blinking or you can just double click on it and the same thing is going to happen. And so at this point, it's you know telling you, hey, press a button. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the trigger and you can see that it now set up button one. And then now you can literally go through all of these and set up all those buttons. So let's say, for example, I'm going to set up a coin as another button. And then um, let's see some of the ones that I usually mostly always set up is going to be the start one, the obviously button one, two and three. Uh, the coin button and then um, a lot of times I go through and I set up a, a button for like reset let's say um, so I can go through and do this one I have one for my uh, quit and escape so I can do this one and then I also have another one for like pause okay so you can, you can see it's it's literally just as easy as that what you cannot do on this driver is set up the up left down and the right they are basically kind of like hard-coded into your preferred device. Now, in this particular one that I've got, which is just a joystick, there's only just one type of movement for up, down, left, and right. So there's really not that big of an issue. But let's say, for instance, that I decided I'm going to switch my preferred device to the gamepad now. Okay. So what you're going to see is, is I'm going to go ahead and go to my start button. And I'm going to go ahead and double click on it to assign. So I'm going to go over to the Logitech 3D and I'm going to click on that trigger. And as you can see, if you guys can hear it, nothing is happening. Like it's not assigning. But if I go over to my gamepad now and I hit the little start button on there, boom, it now assigned. So you can see that this preferred device is what Daphne uses in order to map this out. So the problem that can occur when it comes down to this up, left, down, up, you know, right configuration is that, well, on the gamepad, I have a D pad and then I also have a, um, let me see if I can kind of show you this from a picture perspective. Um, let me go over to expat it real quick because this kind of shows you the map, right? So here, here's my gamepad, and so I have a D, I have a D pad, and then I also have an analog stick, right? Well, 
what tends to happen in Daphne is it in the in the loader screen is it uses the D-pad for the movement. Well, what if I want to use the analog stick because I don't like the D-pad? Well, there's nothing I can do about it. It's pretty much hard coded to just pick whatever it wants to do, and in this case, it's going to use the D-pad. And so um, that's probably one of the only caveats that comes down to um, the using the loader screen here to set up your controllers. Other than that, it's really just as simple as you just saw. So if you're basically just wanting to, you know, bring it up, configure it, get your input set up, that's how you do it. It's really that simple. Okay, so some possible problems that can occur with this methodology, okay, is that let's say that you go through and you unplug one of these controllers and you plug it back in, or you decide that you add and want to add another controller. Those of you guys who have had experience with USB devices, you know that what tends to happen is some of these just start basically changing their orders. And then what could happen is, is your preferred device may change and all of a sudden switch to, you know, the joystick. And so you may, you may come into Daphne Loader and fire up your game and then start trying to play it and notice that it's just not working. And it's probably because your preferred device has changed. And so now, you know, you can go through and change it back. When you're using the, the loader screen to do that, that's really not too much of a big deal because you can obviously come into here and just fire up your, your game settings here, your controllers, and then just click, 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 you know, click over here, okay, and then now you're back in business, right? And then you can click. When you're trying to do that on LaunchBox, that's a big problem because you've got this really cool big box, you know, kind of setup where everything looks pretty and then now all of a sudden you fire up your cliffhanger and then you you're 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 going through and you're playing and you notice that you just like your joysticks aren't working. And so now you're going to have to exit out of your big box, get back over to your operating system, go through this whole process and setting it up and changing it and then going back to big box again, which completely kind of takes away from your arcade experience, right? So, what what, what did I do to kind of make that a little bit more streamlined? All right. So what I basically did is I used a program um, called Xpatter, and that's kind of what I was pulling up. It's a joy to key keyboard, how shall I say, uh, application or a mapper. And so what that will essentially do is here's the Xpatter. Um, and before I kind of go into that, I will say that the program is not free. Uh, it is $10 if you pretty much put it in. From my perspective, it's very, very worth it. it it's very intuitive. There's all kinds of really you know, goodies that are um, that make this program very easy to utilize. And I believe in really paying for, you know, if there's something that I'm really using, um, I, I for $10, that's not a big deal, and, and I'm supporting somebody. So, um, you know, I'm all for that. Um, for those of you that are a little bit more, more uh, peg leg and, and uh, eye patchy, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, $10 is not a big deal. You know, I help those people out. Okay, so basically what the Xpatter does uh, as far as a, a mapper is it allows your game controller to be mapped to your keyboard. So we saw in the Daphne loader, right, when we come over here, that there was those pre, um, pre default uh, keyboard configurations, right? Well, if I use a mapper, I don't need to change anything here. I'm basically just kind of assigning all these buttons to my joystick as I want to. And so it kind of makes it a little bit more convenient without necessarily having to assign anything. Where that can really come into good play is that for games like Cobra Command is you've got, um, you, you've got some uh, uh, inabilities going through this configuration uh, on the loader where you can't change the up, down, left, and the right. And so on the Cobra command, the up and the down are inverted. And myself, I prefer to be able to hit up and it goes up and not necessarily going down. I know that's kind of how the arcade was created, but my preference is to switch it. And using the, the loader, there's just no way to do it. Um, so um, the, the, the x pattern way does uh, allow you to be able to mitigate that to some degree if you're using kind of like the Windows, but it doesn't fix it in LaunchBox, and I have another way to kind of go through and do that. Okay, so um, with that said, let's kind of jump in, and again, 
there are a lot of different joy to key mappers this is just the one that i have used it is not the only one that you can use there's another one called joy to key and there's even ones that are freebie so um you can pretty much use the same approach and the same methodology that i'm using with xpatter to kind of do it with whatever application you want to so i'm just going to show you xpatter because it is the one that i use for my arcade and uh, and it works really really well okay so what we're going to do is go over to Xpatter, and when I double click on it and fire it up for the first time, it's going to go through and say, hey, use this at your own risk. I'm going to say, okay, kind of skip through it and ask you for my language, and that's going to show me which path it is that I want to use for that location, and I say, yes, that's the one, and then it's going to ask me, you know, which of, uh, where do I want to basically have my default saves, and so I definitely want it to be in that location. It is very important that you associate your file to Windows. If you don't associate it, some of the things that I'm going to be showing here will not work. So make sure that you associate. And then once you're associated, okay, it'll literally bring up the program. It, it fires up right down here into the uh, control panel or the uh, quick launch. And so what, what basically happens is when you fire it up, you're going to get this blank screen. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be needing to essentially tell Xpatter what controls I've got in, in this system that I want to map to my keyboard. And so the way that that works is I'm going to come into here and say new. And when I come up to the new, you get this, this blank screen, you know, with nothing in it. So one thing that Xpatter allows you to do is to be able to take your images of your joysticks or whatever you want to, to be able to put them here so that when it comes down to mapping your uh, keys, it's, it's a lot more visually easy to see. So one thing that you can do and that Xpatter has is you can do a search for Xpatter controller images and you're going to find a couple of different locations. Um, there's this one from WeFi's uh, site. They've got all these different controllers you can through. So like, let's say, for example, this ColecoVision, I can click on it and you can see there's a picture of the ColecoVision. Um, you can also go to if you if you buy the Xpatter and you go to their official website, they uh, they do have um, basically when you come to the download screen, there's this one button here that says controller images. You can click on it and there's a whole bunch of um, ones that list that they have from their aspect of it. It's not showing up here because you need to have a, a real registered key. OK, but again, the thing is, is there's there's different kinds of options or you can even go through as far as creating your own. Now, we'll kind of go jump in that just a little bit later. But for the moment, I'm, I'm going to basically go through and I've found my joystick that's right here. And so the way that this works is now that I've opened it up, I can just double click on this so that it opens up on the just regular Windows photo editor. I can come over to here and copy it. And then now I can go over to my profile in uh, Xpatter and then hit paste. And you can see it populates right inside showing what my joystick looked like. And so now is the moment that we start essentially kind of mapping out all the buttons on this device. So I can go through and click on the, let's say the D-pad because this is the d-pad right here and i want to enable my d-pad and it's going to basically start asking me hey press up on the d-pad press down on the d-pad press left and then press right and then boom now i got this crosshair right here that i can just click and drag and just put it right there in that location okay now the cool part with this is this d-pad is not just up down left and the right right i can actually do the diagonals so i want to configure that it actually has the diagonals available because right now if I actually hit the up, down, left, and the right and I hit diagonals, you can see it's doing the both, right? So what if I click on this little gear button and you can see it's set up on the standard. Well, I want it to be eight way. So let me click on our eight way and now it adds those two. And when I hit the diagonal, there's a particular diagonal key, see? So that's kind of really cool uh, to be able to do that. So you can see that right now, you know, it's literally mapping out my D-pad on there. So now I can go through and start doing my buttons, you know, or in this particular case, let's say I've got an analog stick, so I can go to the stick and enable one of those. And it's telling me, hey, put left, up. And so now you can see that this is my analog stick and I can just shift that and put it right there in that location. And I'm basically gonna go through and do that for all of these buttons. So I can go through and enable the second analog stick, go to number two, same thing, go left, up, now that's all configured move that down to that location 
go over to the buttons and start literally just it says press a button on the gamepad to add it so I'm going to start with the A there you go and now I'm going to go over to the B and just drag it over and go to the the Y or the X so this is the X and go over to the Y move that thing over and then go over to the right trigger move that up here and I'm actually move that right here to this side and then go to the left trigger right here go over to my start button right there go over to my select and mode doesn't apply because it's for the controller itself so right now you can see I have literally configured my gamepad and everything works and here's my d-pad here's my here's my analog stick here's the second analog stick here's a select here's a start and then here are all the buttons that I'm selecting okay now I hit OK and you can see that now I have a you know particular joystick setup so what I recommend that is uh, the first thing that needs to be done before we start assigning you know all kinds of keys to this thing is we want to save this layout as like the default so that it's blank and there's nothing in it so what we'll do is we'll come into here and say save as and I'm gonna go ahead and save this under the XPatter folder that I had you know chosen and I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, game pad and say default actually let me just go ahead and say gamepad let's, let's just do that now that I thought about it it's more for the profiles so let's say gamepad okay so now my gamepad is set up and then let's say over here this is my second control I want to set up the Logitech so I can come into here and say new equally the same way I've got a image that I downloaded for my wing so I can come through and copy it go back over to XPatter and then paste it and then literally go through and do the exact same things where it's like okay I've got an analog stick here so I can enable that go left and go up and then now I can put that right here in the middle so these are my this is my stick you get the idea you can you can literally do this you know for all the different joysticks that you've got all right and then let me let me go ahead and save this one also so that we've got it so this is the Logitech Extreme 3D okay now comes the part where we need to save a default profile that's kind of what I was talking about before that I wanted to save as default it really wasn't the gamepad it's the profile so right now I want to save this blank state in this controller so what I want to do is save it as and I'm gonna name it gamepad dash default and then I can do the same thing with the Logitech Extreme and then say save as Logitech Extreme 3D and let me get rid of all this and say dash default okay so now basically these are set up on defaults okay so how do we get the um, the emulation to work on this thing so we talked about over at Daphne where uh, let's get to the emulators and Daphne and the loader okay so when we fire up one of these uh, inputs these are the defaults right that it wants to use from the keyboard so what I can do now with XBatter is just literally mimic every single one of these onto this gamepad. I want to use the gamepad as, as like, you know, my joystick of choice, let's say that. So what I want to do is essentially start, you know, putting these all up. So I can literally click on the, I want to use, let's say I want to use the analog stick for this, right? I don't want to use the D-pad, I want to use the analog stick. So I can click on the analog up, and then now you can see that a keyboard pops up, so I can click put the up arrow as the mapping for the up and then you can either click on it and choose it here or you can just hit the keyword key itself right so now I can basically go through this every single one and map them out and now let's say for like the start button well let's say that the start button I want it to be this one which is the actual start button so I can hit number one because it's mapping out for the keyboard and then let's say like my coin uh, which is number five I want this to be the coin so now that's number five and then uh, for my button selections, let's say most of these games, 
you know, they, they use, they have the three buttons, but a lot of times it's just like the first two. Like Dragon Slayer uses one, uh, Cliffhanger uses two. So most of the time it's, it's the first two. Every now and then you'll have the three. So I'm going to go ahead and configure them accordingly. So this is button one, and it's going to be the space bar. And this is going to be button two, which is going to be your left alt right here. Okay. And then um, let's see here. Let's let's make um, what we're going to do here. You know what? I also forgot. I realized that there's also the buttons uh, here for the push downs. But um, for the sake of, of purposes, we'll just kind of keep going. Um, okay. So I've got my coin uh, and my start. Now I can go through and let's say for pause, which is P. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, the trigger up here for my pause button. And then um, now I can go ahead and use, let's see, what else do we need? Oh, quit. So that's going to be escape. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this trigger and put it as escape. Okay. So you can see right now I have basically mapped out all the keyboard keys to my joystick. All right. And so what I want to do is I want to now save this profile as a different name. So I'm going to come into here and say save as and I'm going to label this as Daphne default. OK, so what that basically means is that right now with the way that everything is set up with the program all fired up and these keys configured, it's mimicking, it's mimicking a keyboard. OK, so let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to go ahead and open up Notepad and I'm going to drag this thing over. OK, and I'm going to literally use the joystick to, you know, hit some of these buttons. So you're going to see that I'm going to hit, you know, the say like the uh, start button here and you're going to see the number one is going to appear here. You see that? Because it's emulating the joystick keys and I can hit the coin button and it's going to be number five. So that's basically how, what is what is happening here. All right. So what 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 basically can happen is now let's say that you've gone through and you set this thing up and you start playing Daphne and everything's working great, right? Well, if you don't if you don't put this thing back to basically nothing on there, then when you start hitting buttons on your joy on your joystick, you may end up doing things on your screen that you didn't want it to, especially if you're playing other games. So it's important that you kind of like reset this back to the way that it was. That's why we created the default profile. So the way that you do that is you can either click on here if you've kind of already had it up and running and just select it and then now boom it gets rid of it or you can go through and say open and then load it up under the uh, default profile right here and then there's your Daphne default and then now let's go back and do the uh, regular default and now it's blank. So you kind of always in, in the in the launch box approach more or less you almost kind of do this every time you you want to essentially put your game your uh, x pattern back to defaults every time that you go into a platform and then you want to get out of it okay okay so this is kind of an example of you know what i use to uh, map out some of these keys uh going towards the um going towards launch box. So what this does is not only does it give me some flexibility to, you know, modify some of the keys if I need to, you know, because I want to use the analog stick instead of the D-pad, but it also uh, makes it so that I don't have that USB problem, you know, where if I'm taking out all kinds of USBs, it doesn't matter. The driver is always going to be loading from what it sees here and it's tied to. You know, so you so th it doesn't matter how much you change USBs and where it's wired to, it'll always keep pulling this this controller. So you just don't run into that problem. Okay, all right. So now that you know, for example, this is configured. Now comes the time to go through and how do you go about assigning this to LaunchBox and making everything work? Okay, so I want to kind of give you know I'm gonna go ahead and kind of erase some of this so that you can have a better feel for it from an arcade perspective. So I'm going to go through and kind of create an image and show you the power of what you can do with the Xpatter, you know, to make it look really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and literally just kind of like uh, just null this out and just get rid of it, you know, completely. So I'm going to go through and say like new and, uh, you know, zero that out and come over here and say new also. And it's gone too. All right. So 
now that this has been you know put in here and uh, let me also do a new so it's completely fresh okay so this is the cool part that you can do where you can go to launch box I'm gonna go to expatter and here is a picture of my arcade cabinet right and so can I basically utilize you know this next batter you know the way that I've got it set up currently is is from from more or less from this this button this way I've got one controller board and then from this button this way I've got another controller board so it's essentially two joysticks right okay so what I can basically do with this is I can open up this picture and I'm gonna go ahead and open this thing up with uh, paint.net this is a freebie you know um, picture editor and so what I can do is I can come into right here and select this area right here because this is gonna be my joystick one and I'm gonna go ahead and just crop this thing okay and after I crop it X batter wants the image to be a very specific size it has to be that size or it just will not work when you try to bring it into X batter so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna resize this to um, this really needs to be 512 by 256 so I'm gonna do 256 here because I know that if I do 512 here the height is gonna be bigger than what it's required for so I'm gonna choose this one and then I can stretch it as we go about so now that I've made that change and I can zoom into this I can adjust the canvas size so that now it's 512 by 256 that is the resolution that expatter has to have in order for you to bring the image into the application if you don't have it exactly that size it will not work so now that I do this this is full image so I can go through and take this and I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it out just a little bit just so that it fits that entire image and now that I've got this I can literally go through and save it as a JPEG and I can go through and, and say this is going to be my left controller. It's going to ask me for my quality settings. I say sure. Okay. Now I can do the same thing with the uh, right. So I can come into here, go to my control panel, select from here all the way over to this side, and then crop that selection. Zoom out. And then literally do the same thing that I was just doing. Let me resize this. Let me put this at 256 and OK and bring it in and then come on in and change my canvas size to 512 and then stretch it. And so now that it's stretched and I've got it there, I can go ahead and save this as my right side. I'm going to go ahead and say left controller. I'm going to say this is right controller. Oops, I just realized that I mistyped that. That's okay. Okay, so that's all done. I'm pretty much finished with this. Let me go ahead and uh, fix this address. There we go. All right, so now I have a right controller and then I also have a left controller, right? So what I can do over here in Xpatter, just like we did with the other controllers, let me come into here. I'm going to open and then essentially come into expatter. Oops, sorry about that. Um, I'm gonna go into the left controller, double click on it, click OK here and copy, and then come over to expatter and go to the new and go through and say paste. And so there's my left controller. And then I can do exactly like what I did before. I say, okay, here's my D-pad, enable. And then I can literally go through and say, you know, up, down, left, and the right. And then put it here in the center. And then just start going through every single one of the buttons, right? And let me go here and put it here. And then go through number two and number three, right? And you just keep going. And then now, now that that's all set up, now you've got your, your left controller set up. Now I'm going to go over to my right controller and go to new and then do the same thing go over here and copy and close and come back to my expatter and then paste and now that profiles there and then do the same thing enable this one and I can hit my up hit my up key you know so on and and assign it so you can see now this is what I basically utilized in my arcade to create 
you know the the joy to key mapping so what this allows to do is when you've got games you know that are pc based games that you have to hit like the escape key or you have to hit you know p for pause you can actually load up a profile that's specific to that particular game and that's what we're going to be doing in launch boxes what we're essentially going to do is we're going to we're going to do a command line to call up the joystick and the profile that you want to load up and then whenever whenever you finish playing that game and you close out of it it essentially puts it right back to the default that's the methodology more or less that we're we're going to be doing with Daphne. Where it gets a little bit more tricky is, is when you want to do some um, more customizations on on the buttons, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, all right, so you guys can see that this is essentially, you know, how you can go about con configuring it. I'm going to go ahead and put my joysticks back to the gamepad, and I'm going to go ahead and put my joystick, uh, let's see here, do, 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 do. I believe this one was the don't save it I'm gonna put that as a gamepad and put this one right here as my logitech okay all right so you saw that all right okay so we've gone through and we also created the um daphne default profile which was this one right okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to get to the point where we're now that we've kind of set up the Daphne, we're going to go ahead and fire up LaunchBox. So I'm going to come into here, fire up my LaunchBox. Okay, and those of you that saw my, my previous video with the Daphne importations and how you get the games inside, you know, you know what, you know what you're looking at here. Okay, and so I've already gone through and set up, you know, the Daphne emulator accordingly. So the only thing that now is going to apply versus that is not in my other video is the auto hotkey scripts that you need to fire up the expatter profiles. So when you go into the emulator under Daphne and you hit edit, when you go to this tab that says running auto hotkey script, okay, this is the script that essentially you use to bring up and launch the expatter with their profile and what you can see is it's it's calling the application name m is basically saying hey i want you to kind of do that silent and throw it down here so that i don't see it popping up and then from the quotes at the very beginning this is going to be the left side of the or if you want to call it joystick one configuration and then you put a space in between and then you put in another quote and then you put in the profile for your right controller okay so when you're doing that you're essentially calling up the profile for this control right here and then this control right here and so what I basically have is to say, hey, I want you to run the Daphne default loader on the first controller, and then on the second one, I want you to load the default, which is nothing on it. And then what it's basically saying here on the auto key is it's saying, hey, if I hit the escape key, I want you to go ahead and run the expatter command again and put and run the default expatter, which is completely blank on the first controller and then do the default on the second controller, which really doesn't do anything because you had it set up here in, in the beginning. So now basically what you're doing is, is when you're escaping, it's saying, hey, go ahead and put this thing back to where it was, had nothing in it. And then after that, go ahead and close the application. Okay, I'll go ahead and leave the scripts, you know, on the, on the video so that you can download it and uh, make it easier for you. So you just literally do a copy and a paste. You know, you'll have to change your path, of course, you know, if something's changed, but this is essentially what we're doing. And so when you when you put that all together, when you go through and you run one of these games, it'll literally, you know, fire this thing up, load this default, you know, Daphne with all these buttons and everything's great. And this will be for every single one of these, you know, Daphne games, it'll it'll be the same. Right? Okay, and then after, like I said, when you hit the escape key, it's literally going to go through and it's going to just load the default profile like this and, you, and you're done. 
And so for for those of you guys who had like all the you know other platforms out here, like if you're if you've got like let's say a, a Windows uh, based uh, like Steam, let's say uh, Street Fighter Five or Street Fighter Four, and you you ha you notice that there's just one of those keyboard keys that you just can't seem to map out on the controller. This is what you can do. You can literally say, "Okay, well, everything is fine except for just this one, this one button." You know, I need to have the F12 key, right? And so now I can come into here and then say "Save as" and give it a name, you know, of of whatever you know game you've got, you know, Street Fighter Four, and then hit save. And then now, when you when you're essentially configuring that one game like this or that one platform, you can go through on the auto hotkey and and put it in. Okay. So that's just kind of a methodology to show you. So um, that's how you do it in LaunchBox. Now, where does this become a problem? The problem occurs when you are wanting to run a customized um, configuration or controller on a individual game, like I mentioned on the cover command where I want the up and the down to be reversed. The, the, the reason that that's a problem is because right now we have this auto hotkey that's been set up at the emulator level, right? And it's it's tied to the uh, uh, the loader, you know, file. And so basically now this applies uh, with the uh, de default profile that we looked at, you know, for Daphne, like uh, this guy, is this this profile applies for every single one of these games. So therefore, if I want to reverse the up and the down, I can I can make that change here under the Daphne default, but then it's going to affect every single other game, right? Okay, so this is where we got to get a little bit creative with the lo the loader file uh, to essentially create customizations, and it's actually really easy to do, and I'll show you. So really, what it comes down to is is I'm going to go and put this back to its default, and what we're going to be doing is we need to now go into the loader file. And let's go ahead and edit this guy. Okay, and so what we're going to basically do is under every single one of these games, you know, from like like my previous video, you're, you're calling up the Daphne command to uh, bring up the game. So essentially what it comes down to is, is under the uh, auto hotkey that we had created, right? We, we went through and we have the run the command to bring up the particular profile. And then when you exit the game, you know, run the command again to restore the profile. Well, so what we're going to basically do is, is we've, we've gone through and created that, um, that Daphne, um, what do you call it? The cover command, um, expatter profile, right? The, this guy right here, right here. So, Whenever I come through and I look at it, this is the one that we created where we reverse the up and the down joysticks, right? So it's really just as simple as I'm going to go ahead and put this back to default here so we can kind of see it. So it's just as simple as going into that loader file and now literally almost putting that same command, but you're going to be putting in the particular game. Uh, profile that you created you know and then of course like I said the secondary Logitech that I want and then it's gonna run the game and then what's gonna happen is is when you hit the escape key to, to quit the game it's going to naturally go through because of the auto hotkey that we created here it's gonna naturally go ahead and run this one to restore it back to the defaults so it's really just as simple as uh, calling up that one command right there in your loader file. And that's the cool part. This is one of the reasons that I like Xpatter because it's just kind of flexible to be able to do this and you don't have to do anything else to make it, you know, adjustable. So so just to kind of give you a visual so you see what, what's kind of going to happen here when you use this uh, this loader file right here. So essentially what's going to happen is is when you come into Cobra Command and you and you click your play, the auto hotkey is going to kick in and then it's going to fire up the Daphne default, which is going to be this normal profile, like we've got a program for every other game. And then the now now the loader file is going to go through and essentially kind of replace that and call the Cobra command profile, which is completely reversed. And then when you hit the escape key, it's going to go through and put it right back to a clean state. And that's it. It's as simple as that to be able to customize the particular game that you're wanting to do.
and that, that's a cool part about all these profiles and you know like I mentioned before is that this doesn't just apply to Daphne it applies to all these other platforms and this is how you do it you know you you can create all these different profiles for the platforms and then using the auto hotkey that you pretty much saw here just basically call it up you know on demand and then bring it back down and then that's it you're pretty much done okay so um i think that's pretty much it guys i i really hope that this kind of helps uh those of you who have been you know having some issues or you know you were needing some assistance and trying to get the controller set up you know here in daphne at least you know a, a way uh to be able to do it and kind of like i mentioned you know this is just using expatter there are other uh programs out there that do the joystick mapping um this is the one that i have used like i said it's um, i feel like it's pretty easy and um, like I said, hopefully this helped you guys out. And um, if, with that said, uh, hope the video was helpful to you and uh, enjoy. Thank you very much.